in this mini series we are going to take five of Gran Turismo 7's most iconic cars that were also legends in the real world and turn them into money making monsters. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Gran Turismo Legends and this one well it doesn't really need much of an introduction. It is quite possibly the GOAT of Gran Turismo cars. It is of course the 1998 Suzuki Escudo Pikes Peak. An absolute legend. And now that we've all had a few seconds to finish drooling over that bit of automotive gorgeousness, let's get down to the tuning. And well, there isn't a lot to do tuning wise. You see, we bought racing hard and racing intermediate tyres. There's a fully customizable ECU paired with the power restrictor because we do need to bring the power down on this. The fully customizable manual transmission, which you guys will need to change to 300. And apart from that, there isn't anything else. It's bog standard. So feel free to pause the video, copy down my settings. Just remember that tune into personal though. So Use mine as a basic guide and find something that works well for yourself. And now it's time to pick a race. And I'm sure you guys may have guessed by the fact I mentioned wet weather tyres that we're heading over to Le Mans. So it's off to the Circuit de la Sarthe for the World Touring Car 700. Now there are a few reasons why I picked this race for this car. One, you get better payouts at Le Mans. Two, I wanted to give the Escudo a chance to go down those long, long straights. And three, well, three I'll get into when we're doing the race video. Now, just as we get down to the slightly more exciting bit of the video, if I could ask if you guys would consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons, it helps out the channel a lot, and I really do appreciate it. Now, the race. I was originally attempting my usual strategy of two stops. However, you'll see a bit later on, that doesn't quite go to plan. As for the car, fuel mapping don't need it adjusted, just leave it on fuel mapping one. Traction control, well, that's up to you. You can get away with no traction control at all, as long as you're careful, or like me, if you just want to be on the south side, add one click. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the Escudo in Gran Turismo, you will already know this. For those of you who aren't, you may be thinking, well, is this car fast? Well, let me put it this way. In less than a minute and a half of this race, you would have gone from 20th to the lead. Or, if you want me to put that into a more visual sense, you would have gained the lead of this race and be disappearing into the distance before you have even reached the second chicane. So yes, the Escudo is definitely fast and now that we have the lead it's a good time to jump towards the end of lap two where if this was a normal Le Mans video for me I'd be coming into the pits telling you guys to make sure you check the weather radar and more than likely we'd be putting on some wet weather tyres and in part that's still correct it's the end of lap two I'm coming into the pits it's even got some rain on the weather radar that is going to be starting soon but I'm not putting on my wet weather tyres I'm putting on another set of racing slicks now I know I always tell you guys to check the weather radar and if you see rain change to wets but this time we're not going to do it so let's get into the pits get those tyres changed fill up with fuel and get back out onto the track now as you can already see the weather has started to change in fact we hadn't even completed half of lap three when it started to rain. Not very heavily, but raining nonetheless. Now this is also the reason I said at the start of the video was the other reason I chose the Escudo for this race. You see, first of all, yes, it's very quick and it has more wing than a Boeing 747. And I should imagine produces more downforce than an F1 car. But the other thing the Escudo has in its favour? It's four wheel drive. And all that drain force 
plus the four wheel drive means, well, one quite significant thing. Even in the wet, this thing is going to stick to the tarmac like snot to a clean tissue. And now we're going to jump ahead to the end of lap three for a quick pit stop to put on the intermediate tyres. Hey, even me a Scudo can only do so much on slicks in the rain and the rain had started getting quite a bit heavier. So, into the pits, on with the intermediate wet weather tyres, top up with a little bit more fuel and then straight back out onto the track. Now, some of the more eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that at no point since we took the lead on lap one have we lost the lead. And you'd be quite right, we haven't. And that is down to the fact that, frankly, the Escudo is just that damn good. It is good in the dry. It is good in the wet. Hell, it's even good in the wet on dry tyres. I mean, this thing is just an absolute beast. And the only time you are going to see the opposition is, well, when you start to lap them. Now at this point, we're going to jump ahead to the end of lap 5, where we are going to make our third pit stop. It was still raining, and it was going to rain, by the look of it, for a few more laps. So, into the pits, another set of intermediates, and we're also going to top up with fuel. And I hate to say it, but there's a reason we're topping up with fuel. For those of you that have seen my previous Le Mans videos, you will know that I don't do a 7th lap. In fact, I would still recommend to you guys that you don't bother doing a 7th lap. You see, in most of the normal cars, you don't need to. You will get to the finish line with 30 seconds, 45 seconds left. And it's a lot quicker just to sit there rather than go around the track all the way again. The trouble is, the Escudo is a little bit too good. And as you can see, by the time we reach the finish line at lap 6, we've got over 3 minutes left to go. So, do that last 7th lap. I mean, you may as well, and enjoy driving your Scudo while you do it. And as soon as you've finished that lap, you'll take the win. A very impressive one. So impressive, in fact, that you would have lapped every other single car on the field. As well as that, you'll get 825,000 credits in the bank. And in my books, that's a win-win. So, there you have it. The 1998 Suzuki Scudo Pikes Peaks Edition. A beast, a legend, possibly even the goat. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit those like and subscribe buttons on the way out. And I will see you guys in the next video. For more great videos like this one, follow this link. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.